perfectly clean. I don't always make my bed in the morning, but when I do, I feel like I'm wasting my time. Like, how necessary is this? I know some people are like, oh, if I make my bed, I'm so much more productive. Doesn't make any sense. I don't. I just semi got ready for the day. Big day today. First beach day of the year. Hopefully it doesn't rain. It kind of looks overcast, but I haven't checked the weather report. It's never correct anyway. I'm at my computer because before I start prepping all the food and it's always like a huge to do when you leave the house. It doesn't matter, like yesterday I took the kids to the splash pad and then we went somewhere else and played in the water. The other day we went to Bush Gardens, you saw that. It's always like a to do, you gotta pack the bags, you gotta grab the towels, you gotta get snacks and water and make sure everyone has a change of clothes if they get wet, bathing suits, walking shoes, diaper bags. It's exhausting. I know there will come a day because sometimes I leave the house with my older kids and I'm like, okay, let's go. And literally like the mental effort is close to zero when I'm like, okay, you ready to go? Cause they can take care of their own stuff. They can grab water if they need it. I don't have to like take care of them as much because they're older, you know, and we can just leave the house and it's so simple. So <laughs> I know one day that will be a thing for the whole family, but today is not that day. So especially when you're packing for the beach, you have to pack like the entire house. Okay, short story long, I came to my computer because I got a package in the mail yesterday. I thought it was my package. I ordered a vintage bathing suit. Last time I showed you the like Lily Pulitzer thread up piece that I got, love that. I needed a bathing suit to wear with it. So I was like hunting around. I get obsessed over certain things. So I found this really cool vintage bathing suit. I thought it was in the package yesterday, but that was for Alex. And so my heart was broken this morning when I found out. So I'm going through uh, my orders. I never order from Macari. Oh my gosh. This is why. This is why I never order. Oh, why do you do this? My order has been canceled. Why? What on earth? My beach day is ruined. Not to be dramatic or anything. <laughs> really looking forward to this. I thought it came in the mail. I was getting my hopes up really is what it was. Why would they cancel my order? It doesn't make any sense. I'll show you what it looks like because it's like the perfect blend of like a vintage fun piece with pops of pink and oh man. You know, I ordered one other thing from Macari a couple of years ago. I think it was a Halloween costume for Wolfgang. Like the hot dog when we were all hot dogs. It was a hot dog newborn costume. I don't want to talk about it. But that was canceled too. And I waited and I, I use an email that I never look at. So I didn't know it was canceled until a week goes by and I'm like, hey, that package should be here by now. Oh my gosh. Devastation has hit our household. Well, so I guess I'm not gonna order from Macari anymore. And I'm not even logged in to show you the picture, what it looks like. I'll try to put it on the screen because I know it's on my phone. I guess I'll just show you if I can even look it up. Makari. Okay, here it is. A horrible grainy picture of it, but a picture nonetheless. I gave the kids Play-Doh to play with it last five seconds these days. Here's the amazing bathing suit that I will never wear. Ooh! Jokes on them. I'm going to Google search it, the image, and see if anyone else is selling it. Not that I need this exact suit, but I ordered it and I got my hopes up for nothing. Ooh, okay, it's on Macari. Mm. If it's from the same seller, I just don't think I understand this website. I give up. I have like 75 tabs open, wanna see? <laughs> Before I actually start doing productive things, um, I have also been obsessing over this wall rug, this tapestry, if you will. Yes, that's in a different language. I also found this one. Oh my gosh, I think I love this one even more, but the shipping is just as much as the item and I just, I don't know, <laughs> I image searched that one too. Oh, another tab with that one. It's huge. Oh, and this is the bathing suit of my actual dreams, but haven't bought that yet. Planning for Meredith's room. Oh my gosh, also the closets. And this is the color I have picked out for Wolfgang's room. I'm so excited for it. I think I'm gonna start that maybe this week. I don't really know when, but the closets for their rooms, I'm having a really hard time designing them and getting the measurements right. And will the secret door work with an Ikea furniture set? So, uh, so many questions. Is that our doorbell? Never heard it sound like that. All right, I'm gonna throw together homemade pancake mix. I was gonna do a bunch of mixes together, but 
I don't know, I'm just gonna throw that one together and make pancakes for the day. This is leftover brownie Friday brownies and also Saturday morning breakfast. <laughs> I made some tortellini pasta this morning. I'm gonna throw together a nice high protein beach snack for me, beach lunch, slash it'll be plenty for uh, the coming days ahead. My countertop is Mom. gross. Mom. I'm gonna have to clean that up. I think the cheese and the tortellini pasta just gives it a little bit extra protein and I'm gonna add some meat to it. Oh my gosh, chicken. Oh, I forgot to cook the chicken, I guess. <laughs> I guess it'll be a veggie. All right, hold on. I need to figure that out. Well, no surprise there. I thought I had my life together. I cooked the pasta this morning and I was like, things are gonna go seamlessly. I'm just gonna cut up the rest of the veggies and throw it in with the pasta salad. And then when it's time to cook the chicken, I'll just add that at the end whenever I cook it, but I'll let this like soak in with the dressing and kind of let those flavors develop. So it's just tortellini pasta salad. I don't measure anything. It's, it's fine. Your life will go on. Every time I cut up some bell peppers, I just always forget how much I love them. I have a red bell pepper. I'm gonna cut up the whole thing because what am I gonna do with like a quarter of a bell pepper left in my fridge? One thing I'm saying out loud because I have to remind myself is that I am going to cut these into hunky chunks. Last time I made this, I like diced up my bell pepper and it was, I don't wanna be dramatic, but it was horrible. So one green bell pepper, one red bell pepper, some red onion, parsley, salami, and cooked chicken. Do you ever dream? I don't dream often, mostly because I feel like I don't get an adequate amount of sleep. One day I will, but today is not that day. Anyway, um, the past week or so, I've had the most wild dreams. I shouldn't even call them dreams. They're nightmares. I wake up the other day, it was like a week ago, I had it. I could not fall back asleep. It was 3.30 in the morning. Not a soul in sight. Place is looking like a ghost town on a faded flannel night. Those aren't the words, but Garth Brooks fans, anyone. Don't mind this, I have kids. It was 3.30 in the morning and I could not fall back asleep. I was terrified. I just checked on my kids, made sure they were all safe, and I just, I was terrified. And then this morning, I had one, because I was up in the middle of the night tending to kids, and then I thankfully fell back asleep. I didn't know if I was going to be able to, but when I fell back asleep, nightmare, I wish I would have just stayed awake. But that one was like end of the world. Oh, that, oh my gosh, it was terrifying as well. And then I'm like, am I doing enough to prepare for that? Do you know what I mean? The answer is no. <laughs> but what are you gonna do? Have you seen the movie with Julia Roberts? I don't know if it's on Netflix or Hulu or whatever, but it's essentially, how am I gonna cut this onion? Oh, da, 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 diced. I'm gonna do slibs on this one because uh, that was, Embarrassing. I went to Cordon Bleu and I make my own rules. I'm gonna do two hunky chunks of the red onion. I like the nice spice it provides. Anyway, there is a, did I say Julia Child movie? Julia Roberts. I love all the Julias. I almost named a child Julia. I feel like I coerced one of my cousins to name her child Julia, because I knew we needed one in our lives. I'm throwing the red onion in here, and then some parsley. What is that parsley? It's an herb that freshens everything up. What if you ask me, it kind of tastes like grass. Give it a good chop. Ugh, do you smell that? Ugh. <laughs> What's it smell like? All right, I'm gonna toss this in reluctantly. Maybe I'll do half. That's looking pretty, right? If you're thinking, wow, this looks a lot like your keto antipasta salad or whatever the heck it's called, uh, this is different because it has pasta <laughs> and not a homemade dressing because I'm trying to uh, make it more convenient since I'm making so much food on our way out to the beach. But I do have about a quarter pound of salami I always get it like this from the deli. Just get it dinner cut, super thick, and I just dice it up. I feel like that's the easiest way rather than buying it in like that summer sausage kind of tube and then struggling with it. So quarter pound, dice it up, throw it in. No skill involved at all. There she is. Oh wait, uh, there's more. 
two more things I'm gonna add to this. But anyway, the Julia movie was like the Wi-Fi went out, like in the whole city slash world. I don't really know. I was halfway paying attention. And you know what I've always said? Movies prepare us for what's about to happen in the real world. And I just, it's not, maybe it won't happen in our lifetime. Maybe it will. I feel like that's how the wars will be. We're getting too deep. Okay. But that kind of thing is real. And the other day, my phone went out. Not the other day. Maybe like a month ago. My phone turned into a brick, essentially. It wouldn't turn on. And I thought, well, how can I call my service provider without a phone? I don't even know where one is located because the GPS is on my phone. I can't Google anything. Can't literally living life without a phone. It's crazy how dependent I am on my phone to like do things. So that's gonna be wild when the world loses internet and we all are forced to go off grid. I added some Parmesan cheese. I did buy this. Parmesan cheese. Oh yeah, because we used the rest of my freshly grated last night, so I knew I would need some for this, so I wow. just bought some. And a little bit of my favorite Olive Garden signature, Italiano. Anyway, I don't know what that movie is called. Doesn't this just look fantastic? Good enough to eat food. What's that one movie with uh, Mandy Moore? She has that restaurant, Good Enough to Eat. It's like one of my binging movies. It's so good. Be my power went out. It's happening! What was that? That's the power. It just went out. It's okay. We're fine. And I had a dream that the power went out. You had a dream that the power went out? It's happening. Oh boy. Well, you know what? We're safe in this house. You don't have to worry about that stuff because we're safe here. I may have put too much pasta. Alex just took a taste test. He said it's my best work yet. Mm. Yum! Uh, I'm gonna throw this in the fridge to let the flavors kind of marinate. Also, I need to add chicken to it, obviously, but uh, what was I talking about? I have to hide away in my pantry. Listen, next thing I'm gonna put together are is the homemade pancake mix. I went to Target for beach snacks and the dried milk I need to make the homemade pancake mix. I can't find it anywhere. I know, I came home and I was like, I'm gonna put it right here so I don't forget. And then here I am, like where's the special spot I put it in? It's in none of the spots that like I would normally put it in. <laughs> Come on, Kim. I do, however, have these espresso beans. I bought them, I don't know, a couple months ago from Trader Joe's. Tra Why does Trader Joe's have the most amazing, doesn't even have a top on. I just like to come in here and smell it. Oh, it's so dang good. The best ones ever. Uh, Thrive Market has a very close second. My local Publix, garbage. Whole Foods, no. I found some at like the checkout lane of Home Goods or TJ Maxx or something. Hey. No. Uh, those are the best. Whoa. I found it. Guess where it was? <laughs> the last place that I looked. Let's go make it. Well, you probably believe me if I told you that these flour and sugar containers have been sitting here since the last time I made the homemade mixes because I knew I wanted to make this one. So that's the main reason I'm doing it today and not waiting for like my next Homestead Happenings video because first of all, when the heck will that happen? And second of all, I want these out of my kitchen and I'm too lazy to like bring them out and then bring them back in. It's just not gonna happen. So did you even know they sold dried powdered milk like this? Simple ingredients. I haven't fed my sourdough starter, side note, in like, I don't know, way too long. Also, the name of the movie I was talking about, because I said so, did I already say this? I feel like I said it in my head. And the one with Julia Roberts is, I don't know the name of that one, but it's new. Just IMDB Julia Roberts, I guess. Ingredients for this. It's just your classic flour, sugar, salt, baking soda, baking powder, and then the dried milk. I have seen some variations of this that don't call for dried milk, but then obviously you have to add milk whenever you cook with it, which I feel like I will do anyway, but maybe this will make it even better. Also, I do feel like at one point in my life, I did have used dried milk before. I can't remember for what, and I feel like it was coconut milk, like dried coconut milk. I don't know. I need to focus because otherwise I'll lose track. But I'm putting in four and a half cups of flour 
and part of me wants to double this already. Three quarters cup of the dried mix. And I just got these containers that I've been using for the brownie mix and the muffin mix and now this mix. I got these in a set from Home Goods and it had all three of them for like, I don't know, nothing. I was really lucky to find it and they're really coming in handy. Yeah, I could easily double this recipe. I probably will. Ooh, the best part of this is one third cup of sugar. And what's crazy about that is, I used to make pancakes with my dad in the morning. And when I tell you, he never measured a single ingredient. <laughs> he was just always like four scoops. Like we had a scoop in the container, four scoops of sugar. And then he'd be like, yeah, a little more. The fond memories of our childhood, right? Two tablespoons of baking powder. I'm gonna go two and a half on that. It just feels right. One tablespoon of baking soda. And then two teaspoons of salt. I never got to use my Valentine's Day mix, so I'm just gonna use it here. I feel like if you wanted to add chocolate chip mix-ins, like that would be, then now would be a good time to do that. Also, have you ever had like strawberry pancakes? If you get freeze dried strawberries, I don't know how shelf stable they are, like after you open the bag, you know? But that would be a good addition. I really like to add nuts to my pancakes, like if they're just for me. But when am I ever making pancakes just for me, you know? All right, I'm gonna double this. Two things I wanna say. I would definitely add protein powder to this. So when I'm cooking it, I'll just add protein powder. Another good add-in, a healthier add-in is like flaxseed. That's a good one that doesn't add uh, hardly any flavor, but definitely some omega-3s and some good health benefits there. But anyway, I don't think I properly expressed to you how terrifying my dreams were. So the most recent one where I said the world was ending, it was like roads were collapsing. I was trying to drive home. The roads obviously weren't there, so I couldn't get there. So I was like taking some forest route. It was next level and kind of reminded me of The Walking Dead combined with just like people that I didn't know could be as mean as they were and just terrifying. Just think of the darkest days. And that's what my nightmare was. And I can't even believe it. And then the other one, I can't, I can't even tell you the other one. It was just so terrifying. I can't let the words out of my mouth. I don't want to relive it. Don't make me do it. So the pancake mix, if you want to make it, I just put a post-it note on there. One cup mix, three quarters cup water, one egg that she said was optional in the post. So I don't know, I always add it. And instead of water, I'll probably add milk. So over here scrolling, wondering the next thing. I think I have to cut some fruit up and stuff. But one of the mixes I added to like my homemade mix things that I want to create um. is homemade pudding mix. <gasps> Not that I make pudding a lot, but I feel like... I, one time I made pudding mix with almond milk and it was a catastrophe. And I don't have any whole milk, but I might just add the mix together because I have all the ingredients, I think. And it calls for powdered milk and like what else am I gonna do with powdered milk, you know what I mean? So I might do that. And I might make the pudding mix. Pudding too. Ma, 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 ma. You just want a nurse? <laughs> that is his life. All day, every day, 24 seven, if I would let him. Uh, it's like the only time he kind of stays still is when he's nursing, so. Uh, yeah, anyway, chopping up some fruit for the beach because there's almost nothing better than just enjoying some time on the beach and chomping on some really hydrating fruit, hydrating and nutritious, also delicious. Also, this was a semi-good watermelon. I got a mini one from Publix, I think. Spent an arm and a leg, I don't know. I always pick the bad ones. For, but for the most part, 90% of this was edible. And uh, was it the best watermelon I've ever had? Yeah, as a matter of fact, best one this year. <laughs> best and only. But I cut this up, the kids always wanna help, but I, you know, I'm just trying to get out the door, trying to get to the beach. Trying to do, and I think they just enjoyed the little snack that I was giving them rather than the, the knives that I typically give them, which they do love. But this time I was just like, let, let mom do it and life will go on, okay? Faster I do this, faster we can get out the door and get to the beach. And that was the ultimate goal. So I cut up a watermelon, also had a cantaloupe and a honeydew. It was the trifecta. Actually, I had a pineapple, which I was really excited about, but I didn't get to that. 
I mean, I did, but you'll see. Maybe. What is your favorite beach snack? The day before, I got some of this fruit, obviously, because I knew we were going to the beach. I knew I needed to stock up on some beach snacks. It's been a while since I went to Costco and got some fruit, so I got some fruit. And obviously, you can't go to the beach without, like, chips or some kind of cracker. My mom always had those, like, oh, what are they called? Like, little itty bitty little cookies with pecans on them, like Sandy's cookies, but not Sandy's. They were like maybe Toll House. I don't really know, but they were delicious nonetheless. And I just thought that was like the ultimate beach snack. Uh, I don't get those. Oh, this was the pineapple that I had in my fridge. Maybe was in my fridge a little too long because uh, it definitely went bad. It's not my fault. It just things happen. And sometimes pineapple slips through the cracks. But Anyway, I got, what's, what's, what are the kids' favorite beach snacks? I would probably say chips. They enjoyed those, mostly because it was like buy one, get one free at Publix. I just tried to buy some buy one, get one free, like, you know, junk food for them to enjoy on the beach. Guilty pleasure. And then the beach that we go to has like a Dunkin' Donuts across the street. And this time we didn't uh, get any Dunkin' Donuts, but that's always an option when we go there. Um, maybe during the summertime, we'll definitely do some of that. But this trip was less involved. But when I go to the beach clips, I'll talk more about that. Can't go to the beach for us without a salami sandwich. For me, it is like, I don't know what, what two peas and carrots, what two things go together, Forrest Gump and Jenny. You know what I mean? Like I personally could never go to the beach without a salami sandwich on a Chicago roll. It has to be on that type of bread. I tried to eat one of these sandwiches at the beach that I'm making right now, just on like a Kaiser roll with ketchup and mayonnaise. And yes, I know it, like the beach is kind of hot. I mean, it's springtime, so it's not crazy hot and mayonnaise and the heat, but like I'm putting it in a cooler, so it's not that big of a deal. Growing up, it was like a no-no. We are not packing anything with mayonnaise on it to the beach. But nowadays, like I'll go to Publix and get some pub subs if we're feeling fancy and I'm running out of time and I didn't shop preparing to go to the beach because that's actually the ultimate is eating a pub sub on the sand. Mm, delicious. But growing up for us, for my family, it was a staple to have salami and mustard on a Chicago roll. It's like a hard, crispy, mm. and I have definitely got my family into the same habit because Alex is like, yeah, pick up some Chicago rolls. I mean, he calls them just, you know, the beach rolls or whatever, but that was uh, passed down from my grandmother. I'm sure of it. Nice, crispy bread. She thinks American bread is just so mushy, and Chicago rolls definitely past the bar for her. So <laughs> for her European heart, her German heart. So anyway, I packed these sandwiches because the kids really like them. They like the lettuce and all the meat and stuff. But for me, I couldn't even eat half of that. And of course, I'm packing a million sandwiches. Obviously, we always, you know, meet up with families, cousins and all that good stuff. So just in case, I mean, it's inevitable. They, you know, I offer whatever food we have, you're more than welcome to eat that kind of thing. So I always like to pack a little bit more than what we need. And then whatever we don't eat, I can just, we come home and put it in the fridge for tomorrow or the next day, you know, even though when we come home from the beach, we're completely exhausted because typically we stay until, you know, after sunset and then we pack up and it's the whole thing. And nowadays suns the sunsets are like 9 PM. It's crazy. But I used to be the gal to go early morning, go to the beach, and then leave before traffic hour, whatever. That's what we always did growing up. But Alex is the opposite. So he'll go later in the day, like afternoon, late a little afternoon, and then we'll stay until sunset. So pros and cons to each, but that's what we do now. And it gives me a little bit more time in the morning to prep and prepare, and it's not a rush to get out of the house. The dilemma of which bathing suit to wear. I did like a try-on haul of all these bathing suits in my last like spring haul. Think I'm leaning toward this one, but I really wanna wear the Lily Pulitzer like serange, but I don't really like this top. So I don't know, I'm just having a little identity crisis over here, no big deal. <laughs> I told you I was really banking on that one swimsuit that I thought was gonna come in. Uh, it turns out she canceled the order like right after I made it, but I told you I, it's like connected to an email that I never see. So I had no idea. Waited over a week to chat. I was like, it should be in by now. But anyway, so my heart broke there. Um, I did cook up the chicken and 
I'm cutting it just into like cubes, just cubing it up, bite-sized pieces, what have you. And the only thing I did to this chicken breast, it's actually Avelina's favorite way that I make chicken and I just hardly do it. And I don't know why. I just, you know, I don't know why. I do it every once in a while for her, but when she requests like, can you make the chicken that I like? And you can see her hand like popping in and out. She just loves it. It is super simple. I just grab some chicken breast, put a little bit of oil in the pan and season the chicken with salt, pepper, Italian seasoning. Literally, that's it. Just let it cook. And on this particular occasion, I was letting it cook. I put a lid over it. I put it, the, when I initially do it, I, to sear the, you know, the top side, I put it season side down and I let it sear. So I have the oil heat on pretty high. And then I cook that for a couple of minutes, flip it over and let it cook the rest of the time for, I don't know, about six, seven, eight minutes, depending on how thick it is. And this particular time, the worst thing you could ever do is walk away from the stove, but I had kids and whatever. So I had the baby and the baby was like begging to go outside. So I brought him outside and I said, I got some of that stuff. I gotta go back in. So I went back in and thankfully it didn't burn. It actually cooked perfectly. And the trick is not the trick, but rule of thumb. I don't know what to say. The law of cooking is you wait to cut your meat until it's cooled a little bit. Because if you cut it right away, right when you take it off of the stove, I'm sure you know this, but just in case you don't, if you cut it right away, all the juices will, you know, just drain out onto the cutting board and you want to keep those juices locked in as long as you can. So let it um, kind of cool down for a couple of minutes and then you cut into it and those juices will hopefully stay inside the meat and that's what will make it nice and juicy, if you will. So before we left for the beach, I wanted to just try to get the house in order a little bit and so I was putting away some of the clean dishes on the countertop. I didn't bother with the ones in the sink, in the dishwasher. I don't even know if there were any in the dishwasher. And yes, Avelina did wear the sweater. <laughs> like it's two different seasons in our house with a teenager, right? I'm sure you can understand. I pick my battles. I don't even care because I know once we actually get to the beach, she's not going to lounge around in this. So she, <laughs> she took it off right when we got there. I don't even think she made it out of the car with her sweatshirt on, but it made me laugh just watching us in the kitchen. And I will say one of the joys... You know, if you are in the trenches with a little one, with a toddler, with a newborn baby, whatever, who is constantly needing you to hold them X, Y, Z, look, there are brighter days ahead where your teenager or whatever, your older kid will come in the kitchen and just hang out and chit chat with you. And that's it. And life, I get, sometimes I get little glimpses of what this kind of life is like without having, you know, a teeny tiny little tot needing me all the time, even though he basically does. At this moment in time, they were preoccupied happily. And so it was just Avelina and mom and dad in the kitchen. And I was like, oh my gosh, it, it just seems like a whole new world is opening up and one that I am not super familiar with. So um, just a, a bright glimpse into the light ahead. <laughs> There's light at the end of the tunnel, even though I feel like most days my head is in the mud, right? In those deep, dark trenches. So I'm just packing up all of our beach bags I've got Lily Pulitzer on the counter here. It's no big deal, guys. I'm just a Lily Pulitzer mom over here doing my best. Uh, one bag was a gift. One bag was from TG Maxx. So heavily discounted, but it just makes my heart happy. I, I sing a love Lily Pulitzer and I'm not afraid to show it. Okay. And I'm about to like pull the trigger on buying a Lily Pulitzer bathing suit just because like... YOLO and stuff. <laughs> if it makes me happy, if it makes you happy, right? I should do it. So I haven't done it yet and I can't. Maybe I'll go to International Mall and see if they've got any good deals going on. But so far, nothing yet. But I'm packing all the snacks in here. Wentworth was making sure we had all the good beach snacks in there. And uh, much to my surprise, he was like, that, those are the beach snacks. I was like, I'm packing a whole cooler and I've got the dry snacks in with the towels. Like, what, what more do you want? I said, if you want anything else, add it. But he was perfectly content. He actually eats the least out of anyone else on the beach because he's just so preoccupied with everything else to do on the beach. And this certain one that we go to, it's the place where we have, that we have the timeshare at. So we have access to like the pool and stuff anytime we want to go there. So that's really cool. And the kids love that going back and forth because sometimes the beach can be hot. Obviously not this day because it is 
the beginning of the season, but all of the fresh fruit and going to the beach, it just really made me crave summer and I'm super excited about summertime and all the good things that are coming along with that and vacations. Oh my gosh. So we met up with some family members and they were like, Hey, do you have any plans for the summer? Like what's going on? Let's try to do something together. And the only thing we have planned is our like built in vacation in the timeshare at the beach. Plus, we live in Florida, so it's kind of like a low cost location. Locate, well, yeah, location, low cost vacation. It's like a staycation, kind of, if you will. Even though, like, anything on the beach is crazy. I mean, that's one of the reasons that we got the timeshare is because Alex and I went on our first and only vacation since we've had kids. It was two nights and we paid up the wazoo for it. And we just thought over time, Uh, The timeshare is definitely the best to go. And Alex has had family there for literally his entire life and beyond. So we felt really comfortable going there and we love it. Made it to the beach. Wolfgang fell asleep like five seconds before we arrived. So it's pretty on brand for him. (laughs) So that means I'll get to enjoy a little bit of the sunshine while not having to chase after him for a little bit. A nice little trial run we had making sure we have everything for the beach. (laughs) Brought everything but the kitchen sink, it feels like. We finally made it to the beach. So, uh, super fun. Alex got crazy sunburn. He must not have put anything on. I don't even know. It's chaos when we get there to like setting up and the kids are running around making sure everyone has sunscreen on. Uh, He must have taken his shirt off at some point and just got fried. So most of the kids are totally fine. And what I love the most is like, see what Wentworth is wearing? Long sleeve rash guard. It's hard to find those in girl sizes. For real. Don't even get me started about boys versus girl clothes. I can't even. It's the worst. Especially bathing suits. Like, like really? His entire body is covered and they're selling like itty bitty bikinis for like two year olds, you know? Anyway, did you know that coconuts per year kill more people than sharks? Yeah, it's like 150 people per sharks is like 60. And most of them are in Florida. Just, oh my gosh, speaking of, look at little Wolfgang. I found that at TJ Maxx and I just wanted to cry when I saw it. I love these, those like one pieces for him. Again, covers a lot of the body. So you have to worry less about sun exposure and all that craziness. So Uh, The hat stayed on for precisely 0.2 seconds. (laughs) I tried to put it on multiple times afterward, but he just wasn't having it. And I just love his hair is just so sweet. These are the pictures that I took, but it's like live pictures. And I just love them so much. I probably took a When we got in the car after the beach, my phone was at 2% is exactly how many pictures and videos that I took but that's just how I live life okay there's plenty of times that I'm not taking pictures but I also feel like am I over documenting but I don't think so that doesn't exist in my life I would rather over document than under document and I just you know I got I got the phone in my hand anyway so I might as well just press record you know watching the kids play is just super fun for my heart and just makes me I just like they're so creative like random stuff like this getting stuck in the sand literally she just stood there let the waves come on and you know eventually you'll sink a little bit so they just you know the little things that they do makes me laugh and uh that seashell bag that Eleanor is holding so amazing got that from Amazon last year and it's such a hit it has holes in the bag so the sand falls out and um you can go collecting seashells put it over your arm and it's just so convenient to have that oh and then Avelina was showing off some of the skills that she learned at the camp that she went to it's like a, uh, an actual like camping camp, like outdoorsy kind of thing. So she learned how to tie. I don't even know what that's called. And some kind of knot. And Wolfgang makes me laugh. Don't worry. We have a life vest for him and all that good stuff. But obviously we're all here and he was okay. We had eyes on him. Super shallow. But he, um, he like goes backwards to go into that little, you know, puddle area. And it just made me laugh. And then this random tube that was stuck in our beach bag from last year got blown up and tossed around. Oh my gosh, so funny. We had a passerby. I said, can you take a family photo? (laughs) Oh my gosh, I was cut out. Made me laugh so hard. I was like, oh, that's hilarious. So I had to include that. And then 
<laughs> Wentworth was trying to do what Eleanor was doing and then trying to jump out of it, which by the way, oh my gosh, be very careful when you are digging holes. This We weren't digging holes. He was just standing there. And then as the waves crash by, you just get stuck in the, in the, um, the sand, whatever. But I will PSA, if you are digging holes on the beach, just don't dig them too deep. The rule of thumb is no deeper than knee high to the shortest knee that you are playing with, if that makes any sense. I hope it does. So no hole too deep is what I'm trying to get at because things can go wrong and accidents happen and sometimes uh, the beach is dangerous. And not only do we have to worry about all the things in the water, sometimes we get really lucky and we say stingrays. I say lucky, but you have to do the stingray shuffle and all that good stuff. There's just, there's a lot of etiquette when you go to the beach, okay? Uh, that made me laugh. I just had to get a little clip of it. And then, of course, my little bull, it's so cool on the beach. With the seagull in the background, didn't even notice that when I was filming it. I mean, perfection does exist, especially with this sandwich. I just had to share like little glimpses of our beach adventure with you. And I hope that you're enjoying the beach as much as we did, but without any of the sun exposure, right? This is actually the safest way to enjoy the beach. <laughs> I read one time or heard one time that watching videos, like if I watch a video at the theme park, my brain interprets it as if I was actually there, which I think is really interesting. I don't know. Kind of crazy. Uh, and then we... Those little cups that I pack, just because sometimes I pack little individual bags, you know, because if the kids want a snack, okay, here's a little pouch baggie. And if you spill it, it's no harm, no foul. It's just one individual size pouch. But I packed like a big box of, you know, cheese crackers or peanut butter crackers. I don't know what they were. So I bought the, brought those little um, paper cups. And, and so I'll open the huge bag of it and just dump a little bit into each cup. Sometimes I pack actual cups. Growing up, we had beach cups. <laughs> and um, we would just bring this really ridiculously large, like, igloo thing that held water. You know what I mean? Like a cooler that held water. It was like a water thing. I don't know what it's actually called. And so whenever we wanted water, we would just dump it into a cup. I mean, the memories here, right? So um, I just do it with snacks. Anyway, I could pack normal cups, but I didn't. I packed these because I had so many of them from when we when we had our ice cream bar last year, which I can't even believe it'll be another year. We'll get to enjoy some more ice cream bars. I like it's March. It feels like it feels like summer, and it's some of my favorite times. Not that I'm you know wishing for the next season, but I'm enjoying the fact that we live in Florida and we have amazing weather, and we're able to go to the beach in March. It's spring break. We met so many Canadians on the beach. We met so many. Uh, there was this family from Indiana. They get two weeks for spring break. But then I realized they do, uh, at, you know, after talking with the families, they do all year school. I'm using quotation marks because they still get um, a summer break. It's just shorter than what we get. But anyway, they have like six weeks of school on, two weeks off or something like that. Maybe it's four weeks on, two weeks off. I can't remember. But it's something along those lines. And so they have two weeks off for spring break. And I just thought, man, that's so dang cool. Um, oh, by the way, <laughs> Avelina <laughs> dug this hole just as we were sitting there talking. And I was like, is it deeper than your knee? Because <laughs> that's rule of thumb. And it wasn't. So that was good. I just thought it was impressive how she literally just sat there. Oh my gosh. Speaking of impressive, people are so creative. Oh, there was a huge turtle invasion that I didn't film. And by turtle invasion, I mean sand turtles. So people just made these sand turtles. And that was an alligator, if you couldn't tell, out of sand. And down the beach a little bit that I obviously didn't catch on camera, but there were like eight sand turtles. And that was so much fun. But I did want to get some clips of just the beach running for you. So if you're having a hard time, just listen to the waves and maybe take a couple of breaths. Ground yourself. Here we go.
wasn't that relaxing. And then uh, at dusk, so like during sunset, there's always people who come out to fish. Normally there's not a lot of people playing in the water. And this is exactly why I was a little late to the party. Everyone was gathering and, you know, we were like, oh, people were literally running from the from everywhere to um, this guy who caught a shark. It was probably like a three foot long shark. And we knew the guy who, you know, released him back into the water. Cause like, you know, you got to release that stuff. And anyway, so everyone was gathering to take pictures of it and everything. And then I waited too long. Okay. You didn't see it very well, but if you go back, you can see, you know, the guy's clearly holding a, a dang shark. So I thought that was pretty cool, but also slightly terrifying that it's so close. What's funny is that day, um, you know, we've been out on the sailboat in that water and we've seen the coolest, I think we saw a manatee last time. Sometimes there's dolphins, there's really cool, just obviously life creatures, ocean creatures in the ocean. Well, even though that's the Gulf, you get what I'm trying to say. But anyway, um, earlier that day, sometimes Alex takes them to the sandbar but uh, the water was colder than usual. So when Alex was starting to go out to the sandbar with the kids, he was like, no, the water dipped in temperature. Like, let's go back because sharks like cooler temperatures, <laughs> cooler water. And, and then someone caught a shark and I was like, oh my God. Oh, so you never know what's out there. That's why some people well, don't go in the water at all. <laughs> like me, I'll go like ankle high, knee high. Uh, yeah, you won't catch me out there very often, but I also, uh, have been traumatized by water plenty of times in my life. So <laughs> I, had, I don't really go underwater at all. I don't even really like the shower, but that's a story for another day. I came home and Alex threw a couple loads in the, uh, laundry. And so the next, this is the next morning I shower. I mean, it's just chaos when you came home from the beach with a bunch of kids, you got to get them clean and bathed and eaten and all that good stuff. So <sighs> anyway. This was the next morning and I saw this mountain of laundry in the laundry room and I knew I needed to tackle it because I had been ignoring it for far too long. It's been a nice long spring break. I don't think I looked in this place one time. Um, and so I thought, well, spring break's over, <laughs> you know, is a, is a cold, harsh reality on this Monday morning that I decided to tackle the laundry. And I'm so glad that I did. Even though I say spring break is over, uh, my kids have the extra Monday off, which is really nice. And it's just like gives us a day to just reset, you know? And so the, the whole beach adventure with the whole family was just the last hoorah for us since Avelina had been gone the whole week and at a sleepaway camp and she had a lot of fun, but also we missed her. So we wanted to do something as a full family and not, you know, missing one limb. So that was a great time. But like I said, the break is over for mom and I knew I needed to tackle this. So this is just your laundry motivation for the day. Throw a load of laundry in. I was actually surprised to see some of the stuff we wore yesterday, you know, the day before at the beach clean and I was like, oh, Alex must have thrown a load in. He is the laundry master after all, self-proclaimed and all that good stuff. So I threw on a podcast and listened to it. And by the end of the podcast, I must have listened to half of it earlier, which makes a lot more sense. But the podcast was an hour and 41 minutes long. And it had ended right around the time where I was ending laundry. And I thought, let me see how long that was, you know, hour and 41 minutes. I was like, surely it did not take me an hour and 41 minutes to do this crap. Okay. And it didn't. And, um, at least that's what I'm telling myself. I don't think it did. It, that would be absolutely crazy. Even though obviously I've got little kids running around and needing me. And I did take a couple of breaks here and there, but I, I was thinking it hasn't been two hours no way, no how, but also there is a way and there is a how, even though I didn't even get to like, there are levels of doing laundry, obviously washer dryer, that thing, but then also folding it slash sorting it and then actually putting it away. So I'm not the best at actually putting it away. Wolfgang's is pretty easy. Uh, I help Meredith with hers. Pretty simple. I'm really excited for when she gets a better system in her bedroom. I just got to do one room at a time. Okay. Uh, hopefully I get to go to, to Lowe's today or tomorrow to figure out some stuff for when Wolfgang's room. Once I do his room, then I'll move on to the next room and I'll just have do one at a time. Okay. But 
Oh, also glass broke in here on the floor. So I took that opportunity to uh, hand mop the floor. But then I kept like stepping on random stuff that was falling out of the laundry. Like, you know, when you put stuff in the laundry and you have got something in the pocket, maybe it's like a little piece of paper and then it crumbles up and it just becomes little dust bits. Anyway, so that's what kept falling on the floor and I kept stepping on it. So that was kind of annoying, but also I need a rug in here. But the rug that I had in here, I couldn't vacuum and I couldn't clean it properly. Maybe I could have thrown it in the wash, but it was so gross. So I just ended up getting rid of it. So I'm needing one in here. I should just buy one, but I overthink that. I'm like, ooh, is this? And I also just want to redo the laundry room, not redo it, but like paint the cabinets and put wallpaper in here. But you saw my wallpaper extravaganza. It's horrible. And really, I shouldn't attempt it ever again. But in my mind, I'm like, oh, in Wolfgang's room, I feel like wallpaper is the way to go in there. <laughs> so we'll see. Maybe I can just hire someone out and just have everything planned. And he can do, or he or she or whoever I hire, will be able to do all the wallpaper in my entire house. But also, it is crazy expensive to do wallpaper. So also, like, one room at a time, you know? I don't know, you know, also my laundry room. I like it the way it is. I'm like, this is actually the perfect laundry room that I don't have to do anything to, you know? I'm just super grateful to even have a laundry room. I've only ever had like, like in the last house, I had a laundry closet. And just to have this space to put stuff and to be able to pile like 10 loads of laundry at once without having it to like infiltrate my bedroom or dining room or whatever. It's just so grateful to have this space too. So I don't want it to seem like, oh, this isn't good enough and I need to fix it. I just want more of my personality around the house. Like I want the cabinets to be purple. Okay. If that gives you any indication, I'm like, we need to pop a color in here. I need to have a little bit more fun uh, doing laundry. Maybe it'll make me want to do laundry. It definitely won't, but at least I'll be like, oh, it's a pretty shade of purple on the cabinets, you know? So anyway, the rest of this day, I helped the kids like tidy up their room, kind of did a weekly reset to, um, you know, just make for the smoothest of transitions that I could before they go back, uh, you know, to school and all that good stuff. Before we get back to a routine, I say that loosely, it's chaos all the time, but it's the good kind of chaos. Sometimes, anyway. <laughs> like I explained in my last cleaning video where I talked about all of that good stuff. We, we went there, but that's fun. And then putting stuff away, it, that's like step two of laundry, like putting it all away. Ooh, maybe that's the third step. I don't really know at this point. There's so many steps. I just, one step at a time is all I can do, right? And I actually think, yeah, I have another load to put in, which is great. I have a, actually a million other things to do today. And I was on Instagram this morning while I was just trying to disassociate. And <laughs> I saw, I found this one, I don't know, this one creator. And she was kind of like Life with Lainey where she shared like things on Amazon. This one was like half things and half fashion. Uh, really intrigued by more of the things. And she had like organizing and... Oh gosh, I'll try to link her in the description box below, but she really encouraged me to, well, not only organize, but fill up my Amazon cart is really what she encouraged me to do and made me think like, oh, all these things are going to make me get my life together. <laughs> and will they? I don't know, maybe some of them, but one step at a time. I'm trying to find if there's anything like specific. There was this, uh, well, obviously lots of organizers, but for Easter, there's this, um, well, no, not that one, though, the water table for summer. Cause I'm starting to like put, so I'm starting to think of summer ideas, which is just absolutely crazy. My mind should be on Easter because we have a big Easter extravaganza every year and I'm prepped for that like 2%. So my mind should be focused on that, but instead I'm focused on summer and I found this water table and I was like, oh my gosh, that's actually amazing. I should probably... But then I'm like, oh, another thing, you know, it's a foldable water table. So I think it's really cool and innovative. So oh, who knows? Who knows if it'll be safe for later or buy now kind of situation. Really, a lot of the things that I'm finding on Instagram lately are recipes and I've been loving them more of like homemade. So I found a homemade granola bar recipe. I used to make homemade granola bars all the time. It's just things that like just start slipping away and I'm like, oh. 
And then I stopped doing them when really I should probably do more of them. But anyway, here we are. And I'm just doing my best. Here we are just living life, trying to be the best version of a mom that I can be. And it's it's okay. Um, but I think I'll make those soon in the future. I'm starting with, you know, pancake mix and all the mixes and stuff. But granola bars will be the next step. And they're so simple. Joanna Gaines even has a recipe, right? I won't follow hers, but I'll follow one of them. But here is such a satisfying semi after, not fully after. Oh, and then the reality of like coming home from a trip it's not over because you got to put everything away. But anyway, that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me, going to the beach trip adventure with us. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want to subscribe, put a little happy in your day. I'm trying to reach a million by the end of the month. See you later. Bye.